and I make videos for SLP assistance or for anybody in speech therapy. So I am sharing with you all today how to master working in speech mixed groups. How to master working in mixed groups. I have felt lately like I've really mastered this. I remember my first year working in the school setting with a mixed group, I was completely thrown off. I was like, how am I supposed to remember not only these kids' names, but their goals? And how am I gonna target every single person's goal all of the time, right? I came from working in early intervention where I was used to working for one hour with one child and really looking at their goals beforehand and i could target every single goal in that hour that we were sitting down and playing however in the school setting the numbers are just going up for people who are needing speech i don't say that in a bad way it's just my caseload i feel like is increasing every year i'm trying to decrease those numbers i'm really trying to help kids get out of speech therapy i feel like that's always the goal i'm gonna be sharing with you all some things that i learned when i first started with the mixed group sessions and then i'm gonna be sharing some things that i still use to this day that helps me keep up with mixed group sessions so when i tell y'all i went in very thrown off my first year i really was what helped me was making note cards i really try to make my groups at least like three to four kids maybe max five if i absolutely have to but i do try to keep them even today between three and four kids if i have to for group session and what really helped was making these note cards that had everyone's individual name i literally sat down <laughs> before the school year started i took my case so i looked at every single person's goals and i worked out how am i going to group these kids i've talked about this before in videos but you can group them you know by their goals if everyone's working on fluency if you want a whole group of articulation if you want everyone working on language that's completely up to you but over the years i've learned that i have to do it based on grade level because that's just how schedules work easier that way and if i'm pulling by grade level you know for example for first grade if i see four different students then i'm gonna write down all these people you know for what time that i want to see them that was step one making a schedule but step two what i'm trying to focus on are the um, note cards whereas where I was writing everyone's name individually, you know, let's just say Anna, Amanda, Abel, and Antonio, right? I'm writing down all these names on the four cards and I'm writing all students' goals. I am writing down number one for Anna is to work on her R and L sounds. Number two for Anna is to follow two step directions. And number three for Anna is to work on her body orientation or making eye contact and holding a conversation with these other students. Let's just say that's Anna. Now for Abel, I think I said Abel. <laughs> Let's say I'm gonna write his down three his three goals down. You get the idea, right? I'm writing everyone's goals and typically they have at least three goals. Some even have up to like five goals for my students. So I was writing a note card for everybody. I wrote down their name, very big, and that was it. So the very first day of speech therapy, when I introduced who I was and what we're gonna do and introducing their goals, I had these note cards out for everyone, right in front of them. Like this is your spot, Abel. This is your spot, Antonio, Anna, and Amanda. And then as the school year went on, like for the first month or so, I had these note cards in front of them. And that really helped me to like, as they're participating in these speech and language activities, I visually see this note card and I can tell, oh, okay, Amanda is working on R and L. So on her next turn, let me target something with R and L. Antonio is doing directions. Let me ask him to do something on the next turn that he's doing. You feel what I'm saying? Like I think the note cards really helped me because I was able to visually see what everyone's working on. That was much easier than skimming through everybody's papers and seeing day to day what they're working on. That's not really for me. I found that the note cards, like I was able to actively see their goals and I was able to actively work on them. And it, I picked up on their goals really fast. Now, as I'm saying, taking turns and when I'm asking them questions, you're probably like, what are you doing? What activity are you talking about that you're doing in mixed groups? And what I'm talking about are games. That's the, all you really can do in mixed groups. I mean, while you can work on other things, I try to really, really take out games all of the time for mixed groups. That could be, you know, a game of shoots and ladders. It could be, I have a lot of games that my district provides for us from Super Duper, which is a great company for speech and language activities. 
So if we're playing a game, there's one for example called Turtle Talk and they give you cards and you're able to ask them questions based off of this card and then they take turns with an electronic spinner and they're they're going around this game board right so the incentive is already there in games which i like the incentive is you know you have a turn and then you have the opportunity to for example win coins or something so there's already an incentive like provided with the game and i think that's really good for if you're working on behavior in mixed groups you could easily be like hey if i catch you doing that again you're gonna i'm gonna have to skip your turn or if something you you do some behavior type of goal in that i like that about games that there's incentives and behavior things to work on number two what i like about games is that everyone's taking a turn right if you have a group of four like i mentioned then everyone is actively listening and waiting for their turn it keeps them engaged by taking turns and then number three is you have a chance to I guess kind of set up the game if you want at the beginning of the session and you can use that time as there's as other kids are setting up the game or picking their character or setting up the cards or something some tasks that you give them you can be focusing on you know little amanda over here you could give her hey i'm gonna be working on this with you when i give you this visual cue make sure you're paying attention and do blank I can really set up kids like for success in that way i can quickly review their goals and say hey i'm gonna do this every time i pick you to take a turn i want you to do blank that really helps and that goes with the taking turns and stuff right so i think games are just the only way i can make sense of mixed groups also it's not always just games i have found over the years like with my older kids fourth fifth grade middle school high school in mixed groups i take a lot of books out or we watch short videos or short um what are they called on disney the shorts not shorts, that's for YouTube. The short films on Disney Plus or something on YouTube that you can find or you know, the best bet in my opinion is actually taking out a book and reading it to them. A grade, I mean, grade level appropriate of course, but you want, when you're doing a book, you can do a lot too. You can target vocabulary at the beginning of the session. If I've already kind of reviewed the book, I can say, hey, what does it mean? Mm -hmm. If I'm working with middle school or high school, I can say like, hey, what do you think um, voter or voting registration means? What do you think a mayor is? What do you think a president does? And really going through these vocabulary words before we're beginning. And then during the book, you can stop, ask questions for, you know, reading comprehension. You can ask them, hey, what do you think is going to come next for inferencing? There's a lot that you can do in a book as well i used to think it was really tricky for articulation i was like they're not gonna get much out of this but i have learned that you can you know if a kid is old enough to understand this you can ask them hey i'm gonna read one paragraph and in this paragraph take this piece of paper and write down all of the words that you hear with your sound so if they're working with s and if they hear shout they hear ship sank like s and sh or something like that if they're writing down all these things and at the end of that paragraph you can take some time and review it with them have them say those words that's just a good way to target articulation in a book too even though i say you can target so many things with books and games it's not ideal for me to target every single goal every single time right so if amanda has four goals abel has <laughs> two goals i'm ideally going to pick goals that everyone has in common for the game so if everyone in my kinder group is working on articulation they all need help with the r sound then that day ideally i'm going to work on the r sound for everyone to participate for me to just write down a list of r words up on the board or on my dry erase board draw something with r something for everyone to be able to participate and for me to really take the time to work on everybody's R sound, right? I have mirrors that I bring out and I say, hey, this is where our tongue should be. This is what our mouth should look like for R and L. Everyone take a mirror and try it out. That's the ideal session for first grade, I guess, working on R and L. However, that's not always the case. If two are working on R and L and the others do not, they have mastered R and L and they're working on S and SH, then what I do, I can either make teams, right? If it's two and two, or I just have to pick one goal. I, I just do. So if everyone has already worked on R and L all of last week, then this week, 
Amanda needs to work on her S and Amanda will be getting that individual attention for this session. It's not always, you know, what I want to do, but it's how I get it done. It's how I can make progress in speech sessions because if I'm spending, you know, just two minutes out of every session doing different goals, it's very hard to see progress very fast. I'm just gonna pick one goal for one person that I have not worked on in a while, right? So another way that I keep track of this is by consistently reviewing and consistently seeing their progress if they have progressed. I do this seriously weekly. I don't just take one day out of the week. I take several days out of the week where I'm reviewing everyone's progress and I'm saying, hey, Amanda, I haven't targeted her inferencing goal in a long time then i'll highlight it and for the next two weeks or so i'm gonna work on the inferencing goal so that way i get some progress out of her i don't want to just neglect that one goal because everyone else doesn't share that goal i'm trying to pick goals. i'm picking goals that everyone's working on but it doesn't always work like that you have to pick goals for you know you to see progress with all that being said um just a quick review of like what i've mentioned number one definitely use note cards if you're struggling with mixed sessions if you need to have like a consistent reminder of their goals or even give the kids reminders for themselves so that they see what they have to work on, note cards really helps. Two is games, any game. You can make something out of any game. Games gives incentives for the kids. It gives them something to look forward to. It helps you with behavior. And then it gives everybody a chance to take a turn. Three was try to target one goal. Um, one goal for every student if that works for you you know if if you know today amanda's working on r today abel is working on following directions today who else did i say and Anto <laughs> antonio antonio is working on inferencing and amanda is working on blank if that works for you picking one goal for each student and you can remember it for that session then do that or if you have to pick a goal like i mentioned for number four is highlighting and consistently reviewing their progress reviewing their goals seeing what you have not worked on highlight it and then work on that that's that's all i have so i hope that helped you all i know this is definitely what has helped me over the years i've really learned to get this right i want to make it as efficient as possible i want all of my sessions to help all of my kids every time so if you like this video please make sure to give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel it'll mean so so much to me and i'll catch you all in my next video bye